live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions Broadcasting from the pods moving in storage studio. It's the Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I am your host, Jade Warshaw. Joined to my right, JD Money. Can I call you that? You can call me whatever you want. Come on, John Deloney. We're taking calls about your life and money. Give us a call. Hit us up. The number is 888-825-5225. And look, whatever it is you want to talk about, whether it's something going on with your budget, you're trying to take a vacation, you don't know if you can afford it, you're trying to buy a car, get out of a car, whatever it is. And of course, John, mental health expert, he's got you covered on anything on that side of things, right? Whatever you call about, we'll have an opinion on I'm I'm, I'm certain of it. And it will be <laughs> worth about what you're paying for. It. So <laughs> bring it on. Whether we're wrong or right. <laughs> All right, let's go to Michael. He's in Nashville. Tennessee. What's going on, Michael? Hey, Jade and John. How are y'all doing? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, the basis of my question is uh, we are, my wife and I will be preparing to live off of one in- income when she starts nursing school next year in May. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have some ideas on, on what we should do in the meantime to prepare for that, but I just wanted to, and I can provide more context if you want me to. Well, yeah. Can, tell me a little bit more about what you're going down to one income. Tell me what you're worried about. Well, I'm not really worried. I just want to try to uh, knock out two financial goals while while we're doing this. Um, basically, should we take her paychecks that she's making now until she starts nursing school in 11 months and pretend like we're living off of my income only uh, budget as if that's the case and take her income now and put that towards the mortgage or savings or, um, or, or kind of what should we do with that? Well, I do think it's important to discover if you can live off the one income. I think that's really important. But until you get to that point, you know, I would say let's go through the baby steps and get as far along as possible and then kind of recalculate. Because as it stands now, without paying off any more debt, without saving any more money, what have you, are you able to live off the one income? Yes. Okay. So that's, we have relief there. We can take a big, deep breath. How comfortably... Uh, pretty, pretty. I mean, it's, it's obviously going to be tighter than it is. We're on baby steps four and six, so we're completely out of debt. Five doesn't apply because we don't have children. Um, so we have our emergency fund. We're saving, we're investing and paying down the mortgage right now. Um, if we go down to my income only, I mean, it, it, it would definitely be tighter, but I've already done the budget and we can definitely, we can definitely make it work. Now, when you go into, when she goes into the nursing school, you're able to pay cash as well? Uh, yes, we, there's a couple of options. There's Tennessee Reconnect, which would actually pay for her school in full. But mm-hmm. if that fails, we, we do have the money set aside for her to pay for the nursing school in addition to our emergency fund. Winning. Very good. So you mentioned earlier that there were, I feel like you said there were two things that you wanted to tackle before this. Did I get that right? Well, no, it, it just, just paying down the mortgage in preparation of this, since we have the two incomes currently, should we further paying down the mortgage by just taking just by just pretending like we're because right now we're budgeting off of both of our incomes together. Uh-huh. Um, so should we take her income that she's making now for the next 11 months until she starts nursing school and maybe put like half of it in savings and half of it towards the mortgage to further to further those goals? I mean, I wouldn't necessarily look at it by income at this point. I would look at it as in our budget. What's our margin and what extra money do we have to do X, Y, Z, as opposed to just saying, oh, we're only going to take your income because who knows? You you said that even on your income, there's margin. So I don't want you to just do it by paycheck, if that makes sense. I want you to do it mm-hmm. by this is how much like because remember, we're budgeting by month and it's not like you guys have a fire that you have to put out somewhere. So it's not like you're in this crazy mode. You've got this amount of money and this is your budget for the month of what month are we in, John, for the love of God? May, May or June or July-ish. <laughs> okay, so we're going in, it's May 30th, we're going into June. So you look at and you say, okay, this is our income for June. What's our budget? And then you do the same thing for July. You already know that the time is coming where it's going to go down to one income. And when that time comes, then you'll say, okay, how much margin do we have to you know, make sure we're hitting baby step four? And then of course, whatever is extra we're doing to baby step six. And so you just take it as it comes as opposed to... I don't know. I feel like you're trying to preempt it in some way, but I don't think that's necessary here. Yeah, dude, it's it's almost 100% of the time, the cuter you try to get with it or the more sophisticated you try to get with it, the more you're going to screw it up. Play it straight yeah. until, I mean, you've already, you've already set yourself up to in such a good position because you've got all the money for nursing school if the scholarship doesn't work out. You don't owe anybody any money except your mortgage. And you've already got, mar- you got margin in your budget. So you've 
you've won and now you're sitting around, you're going to overcomplicate it and you're going to spin it up a little bit. I would just play it straight and go on about your day, man. There's not really a right or wrong way to do this unless you overcomplicate it and then end up falling down. I love that. Thanks for the call, Michael. Good stuff. Good stuff. I love it when people call in and they think like there's a big like problem, but then we find out there is no problem. That's Everything so rare. Was all good. <laughs> I know. So rare. I know, but that was one of them. No problem there. Um, let's see if we can take another call real quick. Do we have time? Yeah, we got let's time. try it. Let's try Sam in Portland, Oregon. What's going on, Sam? Portland, Maine, not uh, Portland, not Oregon. Not too much. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Partying. Good. Uh, hey, real quick. So, uh, to get to my question, uh, my fiance and I, we got engaged two and a half weeks ago. Congrats. Um, thank you. We're we're both on two different baby steps at the moment, um, and we're starting a plan for a wedding. We're in the very beginning phases of it, and we're looking to figure out the best way to handle this. Um, Paying yeah. for it? What's that? You're talking about handling paying for the wedding or handling your debt well no because we're we're, we're going to pay for it in cash like that's not the question like you know Good. there's there's that's how we're going to do it um but just as far as like how we should because she's in baby step two and i recently just got on to baby step three right okay. so when you get married to you're going to be back in baby step two because her debt becomes y- y'all's debt yes. yeah now yes. so yep have you set a budget for this wedding because that's really how we figure out what we need to do next. Well, yeah. So, um, it, you know, we're waiting like a year and a half or so to get married. Just Why? To continue to... Why are you waiting so long? Because he wants her to pay off that debt so he doesn't Bro, have to do it. That's calling so it. dumb, no, Sam. I'm just get married. Right <laughs> Why would you wait a year no. and a half? Be honest. Be honest, Sam. You're right. Go to, listen, because we're, get five we, friends and go to the Justice of the Peace next week. You can throw a party in a year and a half. What Look, are you doing? John, my guy does not want to pay off his He's like, I paid off my debt. This you, is hey, for listen, you. You are, <laughs> hey, she's get. You, you may not have any credit card debt, but you got all kind of baggage you're carrying around that she's going to have to sort through over the course of your marriage. Just get married and y'all work through this thing together, man. I'm not mad at that. What do you think about that, Sam? No, I... No, that, I mean, that's, a, that's an excellent plan. I guess the re- really the only reason, and I'm being honest with you here, the only reason why we'd wait is just because, you know, we do want to have, you know, a traditional wedding. And I guess, you know, you can do that, you know, after the whole, you know, going to the courthouse and getting married thing. Um, but, you know, just as, you know, was important for us both to do that. Hey, the I only reason... I'm messing with you. I know, I know. The only reason I'd wait on this is if you're waiting to save up to actually be able to pay cash for what the wedding... Don't wait because you're trying to pay off debt. Don't wait because you're trying to get more savings. Don't wait because you don't want to pay off her debt secretly. Get married, save up for the wedding, pay cash for the wedding. That's the way I'm doing it, John. Yeah, and she's a baby step too. She can can stop paying off her debt, stockpile cash. Just make sure you get to this wedding without owing anybody anything. That's the way to do it. This is The Ramsey Show. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
right, you're listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm your host today, Jade Warshaw, joined by Dr. John Deloney. We're taking calls all day long, all afternoon long about your life and your money. Be sure to give us a call, 888-825-5225. And more importantly, John, we need to talk about this. Guys, uh, the fact that we're here, the fact that we're on the air, we get to do this crazy job every afternoon is because you guys are out there listening. And we're so grateful that you guys select The Ramsey Show on your podcast, on YouTube. And we really just want to ask you guys to keep doing that. Keep listening to the show. Keep liking the show. Hey, share the show. If there's an episode that you love, text it to a buddy or share it on social media. That's how we keep going. That's how it continues to pop up in the algorithms so that you guys can continue to watch it. And that's good for us and it's good for you. So like it, share it, subscribe to it, uh, even leave a review if it's if it's a nice review. If it's, if it's kind. Hey, and also, if you're one of those people that just sits at home and watches the news all the time and you start to get so mad at your neighbors... Those idiots, if they would just, if they would just, they got to learn. If you want people to get life-changing advice on how to handle their money, how to handle their marriages and their relationships, just simply subscribing to the show kicks it up into your neighbor's algorithms when they're out there. It, it makes the show go up and up and up and it puts it in front of more people. And it's an easy way for you to help your neighbor and you don't even have to talk to them, even mm-hmm. though I wish you would do that too. That's so yeah, good. that's it really helps out. I'm going to, I have several people on my list that I can just be like, you know what? You need Dr. John Deloney in your life. (laughs) Here's, here's the podcast. Here you go. (laughs) All right. Today's question of the day. It's brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. All right. Now that the weather is warming up, it's time to enjoy your outdoor space. Neighborly's Mosquito Joe service can help you make your outdoor area pest free. So you can enjoy being outside in comfort. That's what I'm talking about. Visit neighborly.com to reach your local Mosquito Joe today. All right, today's question comes from Bella in Pennsylvania. Bella writes, I'm 23 years old and I'm trying to figure out if I'm doing the right thing when trying to pay off my debt. I have $50,000 in student loans. I make $65,000 a year and I have a side hustle that brings in 500 to 700 extra each month. My parents have said if I live with them, they will not ask for rent as long as I'm working on paying off my debt. Okay. I can save a minimum of $2,600 $2,600 a month to put towards paying off my loans with the extra income I can be debt-free by next December, if not sooner. I'm struggling with this plan because my friends keep telling me to move out of my parents' house and rent somewhere, and my parents are telling me just to make minimum payments or a little extra on my loans and live a little. Both my friends and family are telling me not to get rid of my credit cards because I know I have a because I have a credit score. I'll never be able to buy a house with no credit, which I know is not true, but I don't know how long it will take my credit score to go away. Am I making the right choice by choosing to stay at home one more year and work until I'm debt free, then find a place to rent until I'm ready to buy a home? Or do I need to make myself more financially independent while trying to pay this off? How do I explain to my friends and family, I cannot and will not live like this anymore and I'm ready to be free? Mm. There's like 15 questions in this one question here. The problem is she's way smarter than her friends. <laughs> I mean... It's pretty straightforward. And she's struggling with the fact that she's smarter than her friends. Yeah. And I, I wonder... Okay, let's pull this thing apart from top to bottom. All right, let's go. So you owe 50000 bucks. Mom and dad say, you can live with us, and we're not going to ask for rent as long as you're working on paying off debt. That's red flag for me, number one. I got no problem with people moving in with their parents, moving into... Uh, she, my, my wife and I sold our house and moved into a residence hall for crying out loud. Here's the thing. You have to have an end date in mind. You've got to have a some structure, some boundaries around this, or it turns into this weird, you wake up and you're 29 years old and you've been living at home for a long time. Because once mom and dad get used to you living there, it's going to be, well, you know, why don't you just, why don't you just save up some more money and you put down payment on a house, et cetera. So if you live with them, great. If y'all come up with this arrangement, y'all shake hands like grown-ups now. But it's a business arrangement that's going to last this long. Put it six months, nine months, mm-hmm. uh, one year. Put a put a date on it so that everybody's on the same page. That you got to go or you got to go. The second thing is stop listening to your friends. Your friends are broke and they're dumb. Stop <laughs> stop listening to them. <laughs> what? It, okay, let me back out. Jade, you and your husband paid off almost half a million dollars in loans. Yes. Yes. And y'all were f- freakishly talented. And I know that you ran around with artists and performers and business managers who yes. were all telling you how you should be living your life. Yes. 
There is it's fake. It's such a it's all phony. Like it, it, look like you have this. Look exactly, like Exactly, yeah. exactly. So how did how did you manage? Because I'm not a good person to ask because I just don't care. Right? <laughs> I simply just don't care. I'll just say like I like my that, old truck and it's just I like it. How did you handle dealing with that much pressure as a new college grad, a newlywed, mm-hmm. trying to make this thing happen? What you just said is the answer. Not caring. The, uh, mo- the moment, John, that you stop caring what other people think is the moment that you can reach your full potential. Hmm. Like, that's the moment. The moment you're like, I could care less if somebody uh, sees what the inside of my house looks like and they're not impressed by it. I could care less if somebody sees what I'm car- driving in the car in the parking lot and it's not, you know, brand new or it's not like what's cool. The moment you could care less that, yeah, I wore, I'm wearing the same outfit I wore last week at this time is the moment that you can achieve what you need to achieve financially because we do so much out of, hey, what's what's he gonna think about that? What are they gonna think if everybody else at the restaurant's ordering, you know, appetizer, uh, dinner, dessert, and I just order an inexpensive appetizer because that's my budget. Like the minute you just go, I don't care, watch, just watch what happens. And this girl right here, she has the right instincts like she's the one like what you said hey you can live at home but put a a date on it she's the one that said hey i can do this by next december her parents didn't do that she did that her her friends are the ones saying hey you know maybe don't do this maybe and it's bothering her because she's got better instincts and i would just challenge her what's her name bella bella in pennsylvania man just go with your instincts what you're thinking is right don't just make payments pay it off your parents, they obviously don't understand that because they said, as long as you're making minimum payments, no, you have it in your brain to pay it off. So pay it off. And yeah, devil may care. Who cares what, what your parents say? My guess is if your parents said, just make payments, they probably have payments. And I want to flip this around for those of you who are running with people that you give what I think is one of the most um, holy names you can give somebody, which is the title of friend. Ooh. I had a couple of buddies when I graduated college. I moved in with them. It was Todd and John. Mm-hmm. And... When I told them I'm trying to pay this thing off, Mm -hmm. both of them had their college covered. When I said, hey, I'm not going out. I'm not doing this. I want to pay this. They got together on their own without me. And they came back when I wrote my third of the rent check. And they said, hey, we're not taking your money. You got to mow the yard. You got a goal. And we're going to back you up on it. Let's go. And so that to me is friends who walk alongside you. When you say, I I want to change my life. And they're like, we'll figure out a way to be a part of this thing. We're not just going to sit on the side like Job's friends and and, and, and throw pennies at you. Oh, come on. And, and that's the thing like she has the ability to influence them whether she realizes it or not right now they might be naysaying they might be kind of chuckling at her but if she walks down this track and she pays off her debt and then she sees her credit score go to, to zero and then she realizes she can still do all the things with a zero credit score and her friends start to see that they will change uh this weekend i went to dinner with a bunch of friends and at the end of the night my buddy was like hey come see the car i just bought in cash and so we all go out to the you know park lot we're looking at it and then my other buddy is like yeah and we just got a second car and we paid cash and she pulls her car up and on the way home sam and i were just like wow all of these folks this was a domino effect because it started with us buying a car in cash and then everybody going why would you do that why would you do that and now we're seeing it have this effect in our friend circle my buddy was like well you know i'm on a budget now i got to pull out my debit card i'm like yes like this is it and so what she's doing i promise you if they're smart they're going to start to take note and they're going to learn from what she's doing right now. So big deal. And it's a tiny, tiny little light in the dark that makes all the difference that people can find their way. It, it, it can be pitch black in a teeny tiny candlelight on the other end of a field. People can find it if That's you will right. just just hold hold tight. As That's my right. as my buddy, great author, S.K. Dahlstrom says, be the only one. Just be the only one. Mm-hmm. When you know you're right, and you know you're doing right, and you know you're changing your entire family tree, Yep. be the only one. Don't be afraid to be the only one. That's right. So go ahead, Bella. Make those payments. Pay it. Pay the payments to pay it off. Don't lollygag on it. Stay, set a date and time when you're going to get out of the house. And then from there on, just keep going. Decide that you're going to live a debt-free lifestyle. No payments in sight. I'm proud of you. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey. 
Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. What's up, guys? This is Jade. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm joined by my co-host this hour, Dr. John Deloney. And I got to tell you guys a little something. Uh, But before I do, be sure to give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225 if you want to chat about whatever's going on in your life as it pertains to your money. We got Dr. John here, so he can always... I know. I know people are setting up for the summer, and they have just exhaled after... They're either, this is the last week of school, or last week was the last week of school. Uh Uh-huh. I know you're in the middle of it and people are dealing with family drama. They're dealing with financial drama. Mm. can't figure out how the summer is going to work. Be brave and make the call. I know you're sitting there on the phone and you're like, ah, I would love to know what they think about my husband just did. Like, call us, 888-825-5225. Don't just sit there. You've That's got right. a lot of stuff. And we're going to walk alongside you and we'll figure it out together. I love that. And look, we can change your name. We don't, you don't yeah. have to say change that it's, it's change Beth where you're from, from Tennessee. Yeah, just yeah, make up something. You can even call in with the accent. My name is Dan, actually. This, this isn't even my name. Really? We'll change, we'll, no, not really. We'll, we'll change anything. We'll change it all. <laughs> That's right. Just give us a call because it's so important that we, we help you through that. All right. Now I'm going to take a very sharp left turn, John, and I'm <laughs> going to talk about our $10 sale, which ends tomorrow. Um, guys, we're doing a $10 sale and it's your last chance that you're going to have to get your hands on our life-changing books and tools. Okay. So listen carefully. If you're looking to get out from under a pile of credit card bills, um, maybe you're just like, I'm so sick of my money and my paycheck getting eaten up every single month. Then the book for you is the total money makeover by Dave Ramsey. I can tell you from experience, it changed my life. That's the one that you need. I can tell you millions of people have used the plan in this book to get control of their life, their money for good. They've changed their complete 180 of their family tree. And let me tell you, the book's only $10. So get your hands on that $10 holla. Uh, You can also get Dave's latest book, Baby Steps Millionaires. Again, one that I have read cover to cover. It's just $10. In this book, Dave's going to show you how to build a legacy, guys, with solid investing plans. And once you've And you're going to do that once you've paid off all your debt. Plus, you're going to be inspired by real life stories of actual factual millionaires uh, who got there by following all seven baby steps. So I'm telling you, total money makeover, check. Baby steps millionaires, check. And not only that, but if you want to improve on your relationships, your mental health, pick up John Deloney's questions for humans. I got stacks of those at the house. I'm telling you, I'm using this stuff. Or uh, own your past, change your future, which I've also read John Deloney. And I rem- can I just tell you guys, my first interaction with John Deloney on the interwebs was I quoted something. I was reading your book and I highlighted it. I tagged you in it and I said, where's the lie? And you thought that I was coming for you. Oh. <laughs> and you were like, what are you talking about? There's no lie here. <laughs> and I was like, no, John, this is what the kids are saying. Um, I know. I, my wife tells me I was born in the wrong century. <laughs> I don't get the jokes. I don't get them. But anyway, all of these books are on sale for just $10 each. Remember, the $10 sale ends tomorrow. So shop these deals before they're gone. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash sale. Wow. That was something. All right. Let's go ahead and take a call. We got Ashton in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. What's going on, Ashton? Uh, not much, guys. Um, thanks for taking my call. Mm-hmm. Um, You're not an Alabama football fan, are you? Of course I am. I, I live in Tuscaloosa, man. I know. I was trying to be. <laughs> I was trying to be funny, and you made it weird. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're sorry. Um, okay, so this is my my question. I work full time. I'm a truck driver, a local truck driver. Um, I would love to go back to school and get a degree. I'm kind of leaning towards physical therapy. Ooh. Um, you know, yeah, it'd be fulfilling, good pay. Um, I heard that the the work-life balance is great. Um, but here's my dilemma. The job I'm currently at, 
is night shifts, 12-hour shifts, 60 hours a week. And I spoke with my boss trying to go part-time. And in a really nice corporate way, they said no. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of struggling because I've been looking for other jobs, something I could do and, you know, cash flow the school while I'm going. Um but nothing is like even close. Let, let me back out a little. Out let money. me back out for a second. Wh- why physical therapy? Did you get on a website that just said this is a good job and it's got good work life balance? And you're like, oh, I think I'll do this. Or do you actually want to sit walking alongside people who have new knees and new hips or who are struggling with things? And you want to? And you want to? Like, where's this interest coming from? Um. Well, my my mother who. You know, majoritively raised me. My dad passed away when I was younger. Um, she's always worked in the medical field. Um, and, like, truck driving is, you know, great in a lot of ways, but there's no, like, I'm not I'm not helping people. And I feel like with this, I could help people, you know, who are struggling or whatever and, um, you know, see it all the way through from the beginning of the process to the end to where they're better. You know excellent, what I mean? Excellent, excellent. Bring something to the So, to bef- the table. listen, before you work nights, which is going to mean you're going to be tired, but this is excellent. Before you haul off and quit your job or start a, a like a, a medical program in, at a university, I want you to go spend a couple of days shadowing a physical therapist. Like, see what they do day in mm-hmm. and day out and make sure this is the shift you want to make. I'm not saying it's not, but after I was, quote unquote, all done with all my school, and then I decided I wanted to go g- get into some more credentials and counseling, I went and sat with counselors, and this is what they do all day, every day, mm-hmm. and made sure before I went and spent a bunch of time and a bunch of money and lost a lot of time away from my family to go jump into that because it was I knew it was something I wanted to do. Now, I'm going to call you on this okay your okay. company says you can't go full-time fine but i got a master's degree and two phds working full-time with a family you can do it if you want to you work night shift and you're gonna be exhausted when you get up in the morning but you can go to class in the morning and you do a part-time school shift while you get your credentials underneath you or you can take some online courses to level out which you're gonna to have to do anyway and you can do that while you're on the road staying in a hotel or staying at home and you're a local driver you're not in hotels but you can figure the school part out easier than you can figure out the work part is that right yes that's that's where i would start if i were you ma'am I'd hang on to that full-time okay. job. Okay. I agree. I mean, you want to keep making a living while you're transitioning into what you want to do. And I think sometimes we want that to be just a full, just a quick transition, like trade apples for oranges. And now we're, you know, eating oranges now, but it, it doesn't always happen like that. You have to kind of make that a smooth transition. And, go, and sometimes you go through a season where it's just not very comfortable. Let's it's be honest about that. You're exhausted. You miss out on cool weekend things. You're going to miss out on hunting trips and fishing yeah. trips. And you're going to miss out on dinners with some date you have. That's mm-hmm. just part of the sacrifice you're making to make a complete life 180 change. Mm-hmm. And that's all good. Okay. Well, you know, can can I say something, guys? I'm gonna sure. be honest. Sure. I don't have time now to do a lot of that stuff. Like anyway, like, <laughs> if you make a point, like, he's like, <laughs> I have no life honest, right now, guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I, I mean, you're I working work, sixty hours a week, laundry. right? Yeah, it, it's night shift. It's I don't I don't know if you guys ever had a night shift job. It is so hard to sleep during the day. That's can, brutal. That's brutal. Can, can you at least get to forty hours? Because I mean, at least um, forty hours, you're still full time. Listen, that's that's what I wanted. That's what I meant by part time was like full time. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. But they they still they still told me no. So like, what uh, are you making in this job? Uh, about seventy five thousand a year before taxes. Okay. Is there? Let me just ask this: Is there a way to transition to another job doing driving like what you're doing, where the hours are less, so that you can start this education? I'm. Um, I've, I've talked to a few places and one place would not tell me how much they paid over the phone. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I was like, okay, you know, yeah. but, um, I'm still probably going to schedule like an interview to go and see what you should. it would be. Look at um, this point, I think that's, you've just got to do a lot of research and figure out what's out there, figure out what this is going to look like for you because you're right at 60 hours a week, John, honestly, how, yeah, you're, that you're dying, tough. but also if you don't got any kids, you're not married, you can, making 75000 is great, 
But you are talking about a radical life shift, and that radical life shift means you're going to have to give up a lot of the comfortable things. And so it may be we're going to take a pay cut from $75,000 to $30,000, and that's enough to pay my bills and to pay my tuition and get me through on beans and rice to the end of this degree. Mm -hmm. just going to be how bad you want it, man. No part of this will be comfortable, and you're going to have to get over the comfortable part and go do something really hard. Ooh, that's so true. John is shooting you straight, Ashton. Thanks for the call. This is The Ramsey Show. guys you're listening to the ramsey show i'm your host jay warshaw to my right dr john deloney and we're taking your calls all afternoon about your life and your money the number is simple triple eight eight two five five two two five and here's the thing uh if you're a new listener and you want to dive deeper into the ramsey baby steps here's the thing we talk all the all day about baby steps and gazelle intensity and beans and rice and baby step four and all these things that you're probably like, man, I just started listening. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, Head over to RamseySolutions.com and just click that get started button. And it's just going to give you everything you need to know what the heck we're talking about. We'll help you figure out your best next step for your financial journey based on exactly where you're at today. And suddenly it will all get crystal clear and start to make sense. So go to RamseySolutions.com and click the get started button. That's all you got to do. All right, let's take a call. We got Cole from Memphis, Tennessee, M town. What's going on? Hey guys. Uh, I went from, um, being in baby set four to being uh $60,000 in debt. Whoa. What and happened? I need some advice. What happened, man? <laughs> uh, well, in, uh, September of 21, uh, my dad died and we had added a baby to the family wow. at the same time. Um, and I just kind of quit doing everything that I should have been doing. And, um, recently, uh, went to therapy and found that, uh, I've kind of been blaming myself for my dad's death, Mm -hmm. uh, and have moved past that and looked at everything that I should have been doing in the past year and a half. And I'm like, okay, now I I'm not making enough income to even make my monthly minimums on the credit card. So I don't know what to do. What happened with your dad, man? Um, he, uh, he went in the hospital. I took him to the hospital and, um, he had a event over the night and like the next day he was like a dementia patient and, uh, it was about two months of that until he passed away. It was, uh, I mean, he basically died from wet brain from drug, from alcohol system, mm. uh, related stuff. Is he struggle with alcohol his, your, your whole life? Yes. So my guess is you've been being a parent for a long, long time since you were a little boy, huh? Yes. You've been covering for him and picking up after him for a long, long time, huh? Correct. So I want you to hear me say this directly. I know your counselor probably told you the same thing. Your old man was real, real lucky to have you as his son. He won the, the lottery getting you as his son. And two, his demons were his demons and they weren't cause of you. Right. That's right. In fact, you were the light in his life. So any any time that thought pops in your head, it's a lie, and you know it's a lie, and it's not right. And it doesn't make it any easier, but, but you can walk forward knowing, hey, that's not true. I do want to challenge you on your language about now that my dad's – like, I'm, I'm over that now. I don't know that you're ever going to be over it, and that's okay. It's not really how grief works. Right. The, it'll be a lighter load, and it'll be a lighter load and a lighter load. But I don't want you to be surprised when you wake up some days and you don't, and it's, you feel sad, man. You lost your old man. 
That's a bum deal, right? And then you made some dumb decisions on the back of it because just you lost some intentionality that happens to all of us and you've gotten up and dusted yourself off and now you're looking in the in the light of day going, whoa, this is, this is a mess now, right? Yes. Okay. I have 100% confidence that you can walk your way through this. Do you believe that? Yes. If you don't trust yourself, it's a waste. This is a waste of both of our time. You trust you now? I do. Awesome. You're good, man. You're good. So t- tell us your financial situation. Um. Yeah. So I've got I've got about thirty six thousand dollars in credit card debt, and about thirty thousand dollars in a personal loan, and. The monthly minimums uh, are almost three grand, um, and the past two years I've primarily been doing real estate, and I made sixty-eight thousand last year, seventy-two thousand the year before. Uh, but I also own an electrical company that's just me and my service truck, <laughs> and uh, I've recently, like in the past two weeks started hopping back in the service truck and just like working like a madman. If I'm awake, I'm either installing electrical work or showing houses. Mm -hmm. And what are you earning from that electrical truck? Um, that remains to be seen because, uh, I, 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 ideally I can, uh, how much have you made? How much have you made? A week. Um, since, well, last week I made, $7,000. $7,000. Okay. That's um, excellent. Why well, did, yeah, okay. don't dismiss yeah. that. Don't Just, dismiss that. Oh, well, we'll see. I, no. seven. You got back in your truck and earned seven grand, man. So the question yeah. is, what are we doing with this money? That's the question because, um, you know, you've got the two sets of payments there. You said you're paying about 3 k in minimum payments every month. Are you on a budget? Yeah. Are we seeing what's going on with the rest of your money? Yes. Me and my wife just spent a week of running through every dollar and we got all of our April and May transactions in there and cut everything we could. And, uh, living expenses are about 6,000, um, a month. And then the 3000 a month in debt payments. All right. So here's the thing. You've done it before because before all of this happened, you're in baby step four, right? So the steps haven't changed. It's the same deal, man. We're taking any and all extra income and we're putting it towards that smallest debt on the debt snowball. Keep $1,000 saved out for your emergency fund, but any extra cash that you have lying around, put it on that smallest debt while you're making minimum payments on everything else. Do you have any savings or any other money laying around? No. Okay. Does your wife work? Uh, No. Why not? Because uh, she she's a full time mom of a four year old and a one year old. All right, so she's staying at home. All right, you're working this electrical truck. You're working real estate. You just said when you put your mind to it, you get out there and you earn an extra seven k. That extra, right? It, yeah. Well, that that was the only income because uh, I haven't had very many. I've only had three real estate closings this year. All right. So. That's yeah. look, if you make seven thousand a month and that's all you made a month, I'm not mad at that. Just go out and do it again plus some the next month. What's this week look like? Right. Um th- this week's looking about like three thousand. Okay, so ten thousand dollars over two weeks. That's a good dude. You're doing great. Yeah. And then what's next week? You have any jobs lined up for next week? Uh, nothing lined up for next week yet. Okay. You may be better off spending your time because the real estate has just parked. And if you're not in that full time, just, just mad dogging it, Mm -hmm. you're going to get run off the road by those who are. You may want to take some of that time you're running around showing people houses that are like, I don't know. I don't know. And you may want to start making calls because you know, you can earn that money on that truck. Mm -hmm. Hey, just wondering, when did you get into real estate? In 2020. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> well played, yeah. dude. <laughs> but look, we're seeing that. We're looking, seeing a lot of folks who got in in 2020 and they weren't used to a normal C. They made a bajillion dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but now that it's like this, it's like, oh, real estate, no more. Whereas other folks I know who have been doing real estate for 20 years, they're like, hey, yeah, I'm just doing my normal job. 
this is how it's always been. It was like farming and it rained a lot in 2020. Yeah. It was great in 2021. And now it's not raining. It's dry yeah. right now. So now, yeah, you've got right. to reevaluate. <laughs> I, Cole, hear me when I say this. You've got to reevaluate. Was I great at real estate? And was that something that I was really shining in? Or was I just really able to take advantage of a really good time? <laughs> yeah, were you fishing in a stock pond? I made that mistake. I thought I was a great fisherman until I went to a real lake and I caught nothing. Right. <laughs> but man, hey, you have proven to yourself you can earn serious money. And if you take that salesman attitude that you've been selling houses with and turn that towards your truck, I, I, man, I think you're going to pay this debt off in no time. I definitely think so. You know, I think that he's just struggling with really what happened with, with his life. family stay on the line brother i'm going to send you a copy of my book own your past change your future and we'll get you hooked up i want you and your wife to read that together and it'll give you a path out man i love it all right guys that does it for this hour of the show be sure to join us next time this is the ramsey show Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Live, it's the Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your money, your relationships, your marriage, your mental health, your work, everything. I'm Dr. John Deloney, joined here by my good friend Jade Warshaw, and we are taking your calls on just about everything. We got an opinion on it, I promise you. 888 5225 And listen, I read the data. I know your marriage is struggling. And I know you are looking at your kids who just got out of school and they already have a screen in hand and they're in front of another screen and you're thinking, I don't want to do another summer like this. And you're looking at your budget and you are not going to be able to make that vacation that you promised everybody. Give us a call. 888-825-5225. And we will help you navigate the wildness that is <laughs> our lives these days, Jade. It's, <laughs> Most ma- definitely. it's mayhem. It is mayhem, but we'll walk you through it. We'll do the best we can. In the meantime, let's try to help Brady out. He's in Little Rock, Arkansas. What's going on, Brady? Hey, y'all. Thanks for having me. Hey, what's going on? Hey, so I work off of commission uh, as a real estate agent, and I was just curious as to how I should build a budget off of that. So we're basically talking about an irregular income that is like, how much do you fluctuate like on a normal month to month? Uh, Well, it it actually fluctuates quite a bit because I live in a real small rural area. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, on average, the last two years I've made uh, right at 50,000 both years. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, one month I might make 15,000 and then next month I might not make anything. Mm hmm. So I totally understand that my husband and I were in entertainment and it was very much like that. I call it feast and famine because one month you could like score big and have some great shows. And then the next month you're like asking your agent, like, where's the work? Where's the gig? So I totally get that. Um, And at the end of the day, it's really setting up your budget in a way that you're paying the the non-negotiables first. And so you're making sure like you, you, you understand no matter what, I've got to pay these bills. Right. That's like your four walls, making sure that you've got food, transportation. Right. You're you're keeping the car running. You're keeping keeping the rent going. And then anything else falls below that line. It's like, okay. And then when I get extra money, I do this, this, this and that. So once you know those numbers, let's just say you have let's let's say theoretically, hey, in order to make my house just stay on. I need $2,000 or I need $3,000, right? But let's say you have a month where you make $10,000. You know that you've got to look at that $10,000 and go, okay, hypothetically, I could stretch three months out of that if I needed to, right? So you start off at that bare bones and then as more money comes in, it's kind of like you can work your way down the list and do a little bit more because you've got more set aside for the next month. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So initially starting, should I go off of like, Say what I made the previous month, or go do the previous year. Mm-hmm. Say so you, you've got a good baseline. It, you've made fifty thousand dollars two years in a row. This year has it been harder this year? 
Uh, no, I'm actually on track to make just a little bit more. Okay, that's great. great. That's perfect. I would keep that number at 50 and then divide that by 12. And that's your, that's your basis for how much it takes you to get through a month. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And when you look back, you might start to see that there's a certain seasonality or certain trends that set up like, hey, it just seems like no matter what, for whatever reason, August, we always make more money. Or for whatever reason, you know, in December, we're just killing it. You're going to start to see those trends develop. And that's also going to make it easier over time to budget and see what you've got. I also, you know, is your wife working? Uh, no, ma'am. She is a stay-at-home mom. Stay-at-home mom. She does work. She works PRN as a as a registered nurse at a local clinic, but that's just one day a week. So, I'll be honest and and take take from this what you want. Uh, but when I was in that situation of having such an irregular income, for my husband and I, it gave us such peace to find a couple of things that we also did that gave us a stable. Like no matter what, we know we're getting this money. And I don't know what that looks like for you. It might be something else that you do on the side where it's like, no matter what, I know. And I can always plan that I'm getting this $2,000 or I can always plan that I'm getting. Do you see what I'm saying? And I feel like yeah. that could go a long way. It doesn't have to be a large amount of money, but that goes a long way when it's paired with irregular income to give you just a little bit of peace of, I know I can count on this. And as long as I, you know, do X, Y, Z, I know we're, I know we're good and I know we're gravy. But at the end of the day for you, a lot of this is being able to have the muscle to hold back and not spend and be like, okay, I know that we've got $10,000 sitting here, but this month we're only spending 4,000 and the, the other 6,000 has to wait until the next month or until you get another um, influx of cash. Let me, I, I'm on a hundred percent commission too. Let me tell you, uh, 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 there's not really a – you can do this any number of ways. Here's how we've done it in our house. Number one, the emergency fund is not this uh, – what I would call a flex fund like Jade was talking about. Your emergency fund is in a separate account for when you've got to replace your roof or your air conditioner goes out. It's not to bail you out month to month. And then when we first were practicing this, my wife and I, we kept what I would call a rolling fund that was – about three months of our average salary because I was new to this whole thing. I had worked in education for my whole career and I just got a paycheck every month, no matter how much I worked or how much time I had off. And this is different now. And so I, it's the months that you have that are really big. And I was blessed to, to spend some time in West Texas where I grew up around. So I was around some farmers one year, may be insane. You may make $2 million one year and you may lose 300,000 the next year, depending on how much it rains. And so the goal here is when you get those $2 million years, you have to look ahead for the next year and the next year. And you're just going to do that on a month to month. So if you have that $15,000 month, oh my gosh, it's going to be so tempting to go out to eat and to go get a new van and do all those things. You got to look and say, okay, I need at least the next two or three months because this is going to pay my bills in case I've got nothing, in case I've got nothing. And then once a year, my wife and I might roll some money into our retirement account or we might roll some money into long-term savings or into a money market account or something like that once we know we have caught up with our months does that make sense yeah yeah absolutely. And, and i've somewhat done that I, what i do is i take 30 percent of every commission check that i get and i put i just stick it back into an account but i, I do that uh for year-end taxes okay so well, I, yeah i don't have to worry about that but that's a different. That's, that's different. a totally different account. That's a third account. What you're doing there, that's super smart. But that can't be the money that hey, if we come on hard times, we take that money because then the at the end of the coming. year, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you've got it's 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 a combination. You've got to have your three to six months of expenses. In your case, because of the nature of your work, you want six months of expenses. So that's savings set number one. Number two, yes, put to, put aside 25, 30% of what you're getting because you know that you're going to have to pay taxes. And then three, as I said, if you have a big month come in, every time you have a big month come in and you know there's a lot of margin, let's set aside a little of that margin until you've got a little bit of a cushion so that you can start to live your life like a normal life, you know? So if you come in a couple of thousand short, you've got a piece that you can pull from, but it also lets you do the things that you need to do depending on the baby step you're on, like investing or putting aside. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you want to feel like you're able to do those things and you're not just waiting The name forever. of this game is discipline and it's just tough. It's just, it, yeah. that's the only difference is that she's got to be disciplined. You do. It's not easy, guys. Living on, living on irregular income, it is not for the faint of heart, but you can do it. It just takes a little bit of discipline and a little bit of really in intentionality on your part. But you can do it. This is The Ramsey Show.
If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 45% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is The Ramsey Show. I'm your host, Jade Warshaw, joined by Dr. John Deloney. I love that. I think it's cool when you have a doctor in front of your name. It just gives you the clout, man. <laughs> it sounds great until your friends get a hold of it. <laughs> and uh, it's not that great. And besides, like when you get a doctorate, your name changes. Like you go from John Deloney to Dr. Deloney. But in my house, my mom and my wife were Dr. Deloney before me. And so I've got these two <laughs> gangster women ahead of me. And it like by the time I came around to it, they're like, oh, that's cute. Take out the trash. It didn't matter. It didn't that's matter. amazing. I love it. Well, give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225. And we will chop it up with you. In the meantime, we got Abigail, who did just that. Abigail, what's going on? Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Hi, this is very exciting. Thank you for taking my call. Most definitely. How can we help? So I'm thinking about selling my dog grooming business to my contractor because I'm burnt out and I really don't make enough money managing it. Wow. Interesting. So if you were to sell it, like, have you done the research? What are, you know, what could you sell it for? Do you have a buyer? What would you do next? Those are my questions. Um, yeah. So I've looked, searched out like a couple lawyers or um, appraisal places, but they only really do like real estate and we don't have real estate. Um, it would just be like my client list and uh, my equipment and stuff. Uh huh. Um, and then I would be looking to sell it to my contractor. Uh, she works for me full time. Mm -hmm. um, she has a lot of health issues, um, which is why I'm feeling a little burnt out lately. Um, I'm just having to do more work in the business, but still not making enough on it. So, so let me. Uh, it's funny you say that. The first question that came to my head when you said you were burnt out with your business was. Are you truly done with this this part of your life, right? And and I've been there too. Or are you burned out by the the ecosystem you've created around this job? Here's my question. Um, if you fired this person, and would that bring joy back into your business? And would it bring cash flow back into your business? No. Um, she helps me basically run it. Um, she does, she works full time. We're usually booked about six to eight weeks in advance, like full time, four to five dogs a day kind of thing. Um, How are you so, not making enough money though? Increase your prices. Then. Um, we have, we increase like every year. Okay. Um, the problem is she makes 60% plus tips. <laughs> um, so she makes too much in my opinion. Um, and I'm only taking home about 15%, maybe that. And that's but she works for you? To clean the farm. Yeah, yes. don't you get to decide? You get to decide. She's been working with me for three years, and I, I don't feel right about taking an income away from her, if that makes sense. Okay, but you're willing um, to I, lose your job. Yeah, so this is... I have, I have a dog boarding business, um, like which is my full-time other business, and then I have two kids at home. Um, so this is kind of... The side on the side right now. <laughs> okay, so let me back up. What, yeah. What's your question? I just, I just, we just started answering your questions. What, what is your question? Should she sell? The question it? is, 
Yeah, so I guess I'm wondering, like, um, how to present the idea to her and, uh, like, what it's worth and everything. Mm-hmm. What, how, how much are you guys pulling in monthly and yearly? Uh, last year, the gross income was about 82000 Okay. And how much of that did you see? Uh, 12000 And how much of that did gross, she see? Like, what'd you pay yourself and what'd you pay her? Uh, she made about 47000 last year. And what'd you make? 12000 Wait, what? Hold on. <laughs> Just, it's your business. <laughs> And I'm sorry, we're not laughing at you. We want to make sure we understand. No, I'm trying to think of what Dave Ramsey would do if, if I was like, hey, man, uh, I, I make 60% of this company. He says she's got it bas- bas- Back- backwards. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you. Th- say it right. Yes. <laughs> because this is your business. You should be making the bigger percentage. She's your employee. Or, like you set yeah, this whole so- thing up. You're bringing it. You're doing all the work and you've got somebody that you're contracting in. I, I'm help me understand because I'm so confused how she's making so much more than you more more than so, double triple yeah so I I just do the managing so I stay at home um, I'm with my kids and then I do my boarding business about 36 hours a week um, and then she works full time at the salon so that's why she makes more than me so I do like the managing and everything so okay, you're just almost but, a passive uh, owner then but wait 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 I gotta call something out because I I'm, I'm not trying to be funky fresh here, but I need to understand because on the one hand, you are making it sound like it's like, oh, I'm doing all this work. It's not worth it. Da, 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 da. But then now on this side, you're like, oh, I only I only do the management. Does that make me make so, sense? I'm just I'm, trying to understand. Yeah, yeah, no, I. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I do. I'm supposed to be doing the managing. But because she's had so many surgeries and health issues, uh-huh. I had to go in on my time. Gotcha. Um, and extra time working like 12 hours a day catching up on all the appointments that we can't just cancel. So Got it. is she, is she paid salary and not, not by dog or not by total profit? No, she, she makes commission. commission so if she's not, commission. if she's not cutting and she's not working, then she's not making any money when she's out on her surgeries. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so you're having to come in and, and do it. So it's not the money. You don't need the money per se. You just don't have the time. Is so that right? why can't you hire another contractor? And that way you can keep earning off the business, but you don't have to pick up her slack. And then that 47 K would just be split between two people. And then you're still making your 12 K, which, Hey, you're making money, whatever. If on your own words, it doesn't take a whole lot of work. It's just you managing from your house. And then you've got another contractor that picks up the slack when old girl can't do it. Then now you're, now you're going. And now you've just got another business here that, like you said, you, you don't make a ton off of, but you're running it. And at any point, if you wanted to expand it and take a bigger portion of it, you could. Unless you're just like, hey, I hate dogs. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> you know, yeah, definitely not it. <laughs> um, I guess I feel like if I were to hire another contractor, I would be uh, babysitting more. Um, I trust this groomer and I... I, I feel I can leave her when, okay. when she is up and running and I trust her with the money and I trust her with the dogs and everything. And I feel like it would be more work for me to Look, in another contract. Well, it, it, it for sure would be, but you, <laughs> you'd make more money. It sounds like you are, you do not want to be in the business yeah. of leadership. Yeah. Cause leadership's hard and it's investing and it's exhausting. Um, yes and no. I mean, I do have, she's got the other business business, though. That's what I'm saying. This is, Um. (laughs) this is where it's painting me. I, here's where, as a person who has owned a similar type business and my husband still runs it, you, it's a delicate balance in doing what you should be doing and having other people doing the other things. And it's because this is if this was like totally in left field and you're like, hey, I'm I'm a chiropractor and da da da. And I also board dogs. And I'd be like, OK, maybe this was just a thing that you did for a while. But you've got the other business that's also with dogs. And it, I just I don't want you to get out of the business simply because you haven't necessarily handled it right up until this point. And 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 at the end of the day, do what you want to do and do what you feel to do. But my biggest thought is you might need another buyer because you have said this other person, they can bear, they're not able to do their work right now. So her mm-hmm. taking it on full time, how is she going to do that? 
I guess I had thought about still helping her um, by her contracting me out if she needs another surgery. But no! then yeah, you've no! got to make a choice, it's Abigail. Just a you... off of, of <laughs> me managing it, right? Yeah, Abigail, here's managing. here's what it sounds like you want. It sounds like you want to make more money. You want to go back to doing less work. You want to not deal with management issues, but you do want to be a manager and you <laughs> want to hold her accountable, but you don't want to like hurt her feelings because she's been with you for a long time. And you don't want to add anybody new because you trust the old person, but the old person doesn't work it, anymore. <sighs> you got you got to just make some hard calls. Look, you're going to be uncomfortable one way or another. So just choose your discomfort and move forward. Choose your discomfort and move forward. Let me say this. You have someone you trust now and it took time to build that trust. You can find someone else that you trust. You can add more people and build trust and, uh, and you know, learn their integrity over time. That's that's how it works. But when it comes to the sale of this thing, I would net present value it out. If this is me, I'm just making up numbers. You're, it's so small that you're going to two or three years. And that's what I would sell it for. That's just me. I mean, she's got the assets that she can sell off and her list of clients. Yeah. Yeah. Multiply that by, I don't know, three to five, yeah. three to four is usually how it works. All right. Make your choice, Abigail. This is The Ramsey Show. Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to healthcare, but there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. Listening to the Ramsey Show and in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt free stage, we got Clint and Lori from Cleveland, Ohio. What's going on, Clint? What and Lori? How are you doing? Hey. <laughs> How are we I doing? Awesome. So good. Wait, you guys' energy is out of control. <laughs> I, I'm excited. I, I know. I just know that you guys paid off a monster of debt. We what did. Is, we did. What uh, is it? 153,053 months. Hey, Wow, yeah. one hundred fifty-three thousand in wow. You what guys do you are, do for a living? I'm a civil engineer. And I'm a uh -huh. social worker. Okay, I love it. Outstanding. So yeah. you guys are gonna have to break this down. Like, tell us a story. Tell us how all this. Tell us how it went down. <laughs> well, uh, we we had credit cards. We had um, student loans, car loans. Uh, you name it, we had it. Normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, that at the end of the year, I always kind of take a time to do like a little self-evaluation um, going into a new year. And that year, I just felt like God was saying to me, you've got to get this right with your money. Wow. And um, then I checked out our church uh, webpage and there was a financial peace class starting two days later. And I'm like, we're going, Clint, cancel <laughs> your plans for Wednesday night. We're going to be there. So wow. um, we went and uh, it was Clint's second time taking the class, my first time. Um, what was it like having a touchy-feely social worker tell the engineer we're going to a class about money oh he's uh, used to it oh uh, yeah yeah if if she tells me i go you know that's yeah. a genius engineer i love it that's the last class of engineering college they're like hey by the way just say yes <laughs> yeah, yeah. just say yes so you get signed up for fpu you get into it just just shoot me straight what was your first impression were you like yes or were you like mm, like were you skeptical did it take you a minute to get on board tell me about that so right when we started we wanted to give up right away and <laughs> Lori will kind of tell you why um i i work for the government so uh -huh. we were on furlough in 2019 and, okay um she can kind of tell the rest yeah so i think we kind of knew a little bit about what the program was we clint had gone through it by himself when we were engaged and mm -hmm. then um 
we yeah so we started the class maybe like two weeks later our hot water heater went out mm. and then two weeks after that he went on furlough and we were like oh my gosh oh. we wanted to quit so bad and I felt like just getting through that hurdle and those two hurdles alone was enough to kind of just like propel us through so it was like okay okay it's gonna be okay we took an eleven hundred dollar hit like right off the bat and then we're like oh my gosh can we do this every part of us wanted to go and just be like this doesn't work we're quitting we're giving up wow and and we didn't we kept going (laughs) well it probably also made you see like how precarious your situation can be right like all it takes is a water heater gone out or being furloughed for you know, just the dominoes to fall all over the place. Yeah, people think they get a job in the government. It's going to be stable and slow forever until it's just one Tuesday afternoon. It's just not anymore, right? Yeah. Yes. So... (laughs) 153,000 over the course of 53k. What was your what was your income during that time? Uh, it was 120 to 150. Wow. And what was the what accounts for that increase? Um just pay raises over the years. Um, pay raises over the years. Yeah. 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 Very very cool. Okay, so so what did you do when you got furloughed? Because the, the, the psychological data tells me that when you lose your job, when you get sent home, your body responds as though you've just lost a loved one. It's damaging mm. to the psyche. It's damaging, it's, especially for a breadwinner. It's a lot of shame involved to sit down and tell your wife, hey, I don't have a paycheck anymore. Like That yeah. whole thing is scary. You go home. What do you do next? So I went to work um, a lot. <laughs> I love I, it. I've been working part-time, and I work at a hospital, and I was like, I will take any shift you can give me. Yes. I went to a bigger hospital, like, you know, north of where we live. I usually work south of where we live. I'm like, whatever, whatever you have, I'll take your weekends. I'll take Mm -hmm. your holidays. I'll take whatever you can give me. And, um, so we, I mean, I was just grinding it out. I cranked it up to full time and we tried to You married well, my brother. I know that's right. I agree. (laughs) Stepping up. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Yes. So what did you do though? Um, so, uh, we... You potty trained our middle child. I potty trained our middle child, yeah. No, no, no. No, John, I I respect that. Uh, No, I'm saying that's worse than anything you could have done. And so we we had a snowstorm, like, right when it happened, like, 15 inches of snow. We ran out of diapers. He was 19 months old. And we just, I'm like, okay. Now's the time. Now's the time. (laughs) We're like, there's $42 a month. We can save it. You can stay here and potty train. Okay. I know that's right. Yeah, if you get potty trained, that's an instant raise. You're you're the only guy in the government who was on all fours every night just begging God, please let me go back to work. Please. Oh, my God. That's incredible. Waiting for it to open back up. (laughs) That is so funny. I mean, most of the time when we talk to people, we're like, what was the hardest part? And they're like, oh, the budget. And you're like... Potty, potty training. training. <laughs> and she's like, hey, I'm going to go to every hospital in, yeah, in northern Ohio. She was because happy to go to work. She was happy to go to work. I bet so. So, so okay, so you're fur- furloughed. We've t- taken extra shifts. We're potty training the kids. I want, like, what were some of the crazy things that you guys did? Because everybody's got that crazy story of, like, oh, no, we only ate Chef Boyardee, you know, seven nights a week. What was the thing that you did that was, like, if you told your friends – hey, we're doing this one thing to pay off debt that they would think you're crazy? Well, for me, I let her create the budget. She's a free spirit. <laughs> um, she wouldn't get on the same page until until she... Um, uh, and, and so when she started creating the budget, we were finally on the same page, although it drove me nuts because her handwriting was all over the place. She was had scratches. Oh, the down. written budget. Oh, yeah. It was, it was awful. Wow. Um, <laughs> so you're doing this budget on a legal pad, like on a, on a piece of paper, not, I not a spreadsheet. Paper. I love paper. I do not like spreadsheets. Oh, my gosh. We got to hook you guys up with some every dollar before you get off of here <laughs> and get you guys into, in, into the 2000s. All right. Uh, but l- let, me, let me ask you this in all seriousness. Um, that journey, 55 months, that's a long time. That's yeah, a long time. time. And there are nights when you look over and he is asleep or she's asleep and you can't, you can't sleep and you're staring at the ceiling and you're done with the whole thing. You're done with your little boys not being able to go do stuff. You're done with not being able to see your kids because you're working 50 shifts a week. You're done with the government job, but you don't have anywhere else to go. You're done with all of it. How do you, if someone is sitting right where you were and they're three, three weeks in or they're three months in and the whole thing falls apart, 
What do you tell them? How'd you keep going? I think the the boys were really our why. I mean, um, what I guess the other piece that wasn't covered in, in why the journey took so long was that um, throughout the course of this, we found out that our youngest child has a extremely rare genetic disorder. Mm. And so we cash flowed tons and tons and tons of um, medical appointments, wow. a hospital stay, a bunch of um, GI procedures. And, and therapy. I mean, we paid so thousands wow. in medical on top and we were able to cash flow that. And I think part of it was like, we want to get to that point where we have the peace. Like when we, you know, like Dr. John Deloney says all the time, like where we can sleep at night mm-hmm. and know that that we're going to be okay and that they're going to be okay. That's right. And if he needs more things down the road, that we can continue to do that. We can continue to cash flow it and, um, and also just have that peace of mind um, mentally as well. That's, That's a, incredible. That, incredible. Man. There's that, always more to the story, John. There always, there always <laughs> is. But I, I, I just can't help but wonder if that whisper in the night, you, you're going to have to get your money right. Yeah was, hey, you're about to head through a a dark tunnel for a while. It's going to be tough. Well, I'm so proud of you guys. So, so proud of you guys. You guys are rock stars. And, of course, we've got that Live and Give box for you. You can gift it to somebody else. It includes a total money makeover, Baby Steps Millionaires, and, of course, a year of FBU. Yeah, let's count them down. Let's count them down. All right, Clint Lori, 153. Bring up the kids. Let's get a three, two, one. Go quick, go quick. We're up against the clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, two, 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 one. We're dead free! I love it, I love it, I love it. That's what I'm talking about. Clinton Lori paying off 153K in 53 months, making 120 to 150K. That's how you do it, guys. We're proud of you. This is The Ramsey Show. What's up, guys? You're listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm Jade Warshaw, your host, joined by Dr. John Deloney to my right. I like to call you JD Money. I'll take it. I like it. I like I'll take it. it. Guys, if you're wondering whether to buy or sell a home this year, here's what you need to know about the housing market. There's still more demand for homes than there are homes to buy. So home prices probably won't plummet, but ongoing interest rate hikes are making mortgages unaffordable for some buyers. Let's be honest about that. So home prices aren't expected to spike either. So what does this all mean for you? That is the question. It means if you're buying a home, you may still face some competition and big price tags. And if you want to sell your home, chances are you can still make a nice profit, but you may have to be patient for the right offer to come. Imagine that. Of course, all that depends on where you are, where you are, because every market is different. Okay, that's why you need to work with an experienced real estate agent when you're ready to start the home buying or selling process. You want someone who's done this hundreds of times before and knows how to negotiate a strong deal based on on a current market. You can find agents like that who are Ramsey trusted through our endorsed local providers program. They are top performing agents around the country who we trust are going to serve you well. To get to to get connected today, go to ramseysolutions.com slash agent. That's ramseysolutions.com slash agent. And y'all know I'm always going to tell you, I'm going to shoot you straight. I have used Ramsey uh, endorsed local providers for real estate. John, when we moved here, I'm a shout her out. Mandy Lynn Festy. She came through in the clutch, man. Amanda, this- Amanda Lewis was, was mine. And yes. she was awesome. She worked with me for nine months. At one point she sat me down and said, you are being unrealistic. Okay. And she let me have it in the right way. 
And man, we landed on a on a dream place. So it's been awesome. Yeah, man, they shoot you straight. They do not lie. I remember. I kind of wonder. I, I need for a, to ask her. I feel like maybe we might have been tough clients. I my I think her my Amanda's <laughs> exact quote to me was, "You're a very tough client." <laughs> so we're sorry. We're we are high maintenance people over here. I'm not I'm gonna lie about that. A little bit of drama. <laughs> maybe William's a little better than us. William in Minneapolis. What's going on in your world? Hi, guys. It's a pleasure to speak with the both of you. I'm very new to Ramsey Solutions, so uh, bear with me. Welcome Ooh, to the cult, my man. You. Not cult. Don't say this that, This is for John. sure a cult, William. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are great. Well, I will, uh, I'll be coming into um, a, a pretty sizable inheritance that will be uh, in the form of cash and land. Uh, but my question really has to do with the land side of this. Um, the land is worth in the neighborhood of you know three million dollars, um, so it's a pretty sizable amount of of land um, that my family has, you know, amassed and passed down since my you know my family immigrated here. Uh, so the, the the generation before my parents made it very clear to them that their wish was that the land was not meant to be sold. Okay, and my parents my parents honored that and. Um, and add it on to that land by, you know, buying up uh, the acreage next door to it and, and so on. It kept building out. Um, uh, so they honored that wish and they didn't sell it, but they did not place that expectation on me. Um, okay. I have moved away and simply don't want to manage the land, even though there are ways I could generate income from the acreage, you know, like logging or renting out the fields to cover uh, the taxes. But I just, don't necessarily want to do that. And so essentially, do I have a moral obligation to keep this land? Oh, Jay, do you mind if I jump in on this? Uh, Go for it, John. (laughs) So as somebody who is scratching and clawing with almost every spare penny to purchase land, that's going to be generational land for my family. This one's hard. Um, Anytime you've got a moral question that is tough for you to answer, I always want to look at the people you are not talking to. And so have you sat down with your parents and said, hey, what's the expectation with this property? Um, so when, when we did have these conversations, essentially what my father was big on is it, it's going to be your decision, um, but this is how – our family and generations that have come before us have mm-hmm. felt about it. It's it, the balls in your court. Then uh, my dad was pretty clear. He's not going to put that kind of pressure on me, but, um, uh, but he was very clear on how the previous generations have felt about this, about this land. How, how has the land generated income previously? Um, Honestly, uh, it, it, it hasn't. Uh, there's been uh, uh, a couple times where we've logged it, um, and then we've rented out a couple fields. I mean, because it's a thousand plus acres, but uh, really a lot of it is just for uh, recreational use, right? Four wheeling, hunting, but I I don't do any of that, uh-huh. and um, uh, so so really it was just it was meant for enjoyment, um, really for the family. How is it appreciated over the last twenty five thirty years? Um. I'm not sure uh, because, like I said, I mean it's been in our it's been in our family for well over a hundred years, um, and so I'm, I, I'm not sure exactly how it's appreciated. But um, I know my my parents have uh, gotten some pretty good deals on the neighboring pieces mm-hmm. of land um, because they're so familiar with our family. Let me let um, me let me back out and ask a different question. Do you need this money? And here's what I'm asking. What if if you were given three million dollars in a four hundred one portfolio, couldn't touch it till you were fifty five or sixty five, whatever it is? That'd be a pretty incredible gift that hopefully would appreciate it at what the average has been over the last hundred years, which is about ten to twelve percent. I can't imagine having this much land sitting on this for the next thirty years or however old you are. Would it not? Would you not sell a hundred-year-old family legacy and turn around and dump this money into a an, a retirement account that may or may not perform as well as this as this property? See what I'm saying? 
I mean, I, I, I do. And I mean, to, to your first question, do we need the money? I mean, my, my wife and I, we're young, we're 25, and we don't need the money in the sense of um, we're, we're, we're out of debt um, mm-hmm. and we unknowingly have been following your guys' principles, but uh, we, we're out of debt. We're, we have our 401ks maxed out. We have about $75,000 in our 401k. Um, and Pay for uh, home? we're paying. Uh, not yet. We're, we have about $228,000 left, but we'll have that paid off by the end of next year. Let me ask you, um, let me ask you something. Let me, let me go back to land real quick. How much is it going to cost you out of your pocket to maintain this land? Whether it's uh, keeping it up or taxes, uh, whatever. Yeah. With, uh, with taxes and everything, it'll be, um, in the neighborhood of 30 to 40,000. A, a year? What? A year, yeah. Yeah, but you can put some cows fun. on it, and that goes away. I mean, you there, there's so many things you can do with it. Here, I, yeah, yeah. William, yeah. A lot of it's lakefront property, so that's what adds the taxes. I feel yeah. like I, when you call in, you know, all we can tell you is kind of what we would do. You know, at the end of the day, you're going to go home and do what, what you think is best. And you've kind of framed it to where – you framed it up to where you understand the weight of this, but there's also kind of your out there. Your dad gave you an out. But obviously – that initial cause, that's what's tripping you up. And it, I, I want to encourage you to take your time on this. I want to encourage you. How long have you had this inheritance? Well, it, when did you get it? We haven't, it's not in our name yet. Um, we're still kind of going through okay. the process, but uh, then, yes. it's been known for years. Even, yes, but now it's happening, and that's different from something being hypothetical is different from when it actually happens. And so I want you – this is weighty to me. This doesn't feel like you're just going to up and decide. I want you to take time with this because you're 25, and let me just tell you, some of the decisions I made at 25, if I could go back and do it, I would – do it differently. If I could turn back yes, time. 100%. You never should have started that, John. I know. Um, Take your time. To answer your question, like on, uh, I don't think it's a moral issue in terms of a sin issue or, or something like that. I'll tell you, we have a disposable world and we are all about the tragedy of selling a hundred year old property for three million dollars so y'all could buy a nice big nine thousand square foot house makes me just sick to my stomach so to answer your question all the way through man i I don't know that it's a moral issue you're not an evil person it's not it's not you couldn't pry this land out of my hands is what i would say yeah i don't think it's moral but i do think it's it's questioning some things yeah he's got a lot of things to think about this is the ramsey show slow play man Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm your host, Jade Warshaw, joined to my right by Dr. John Deloney. Give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225. Hey, I just realized something, John. We're not, we're no longer building actual amazing relationships. We were. Just depends on who's reading it. <laughs> we're doing all those things. You've got calls about money, mental health, marriage, your work, whatever you got going on. We got you. I like that. I like this hanging out to have a conversation about your life and money. That's great. It like works it. perfect. All right, Sarah, you're first up to have a conversation about your life and your money. What's going on in Orlando, Florida, Sarah? Hi, how are you guys? Doing good. How are you? I'm good. So I am a college student. I am halfway through school in my journey to get a bachelor's degree, and I have a paid-for camper that I am bringing down from Illinois to live in. I am moving out of a very horrible renter's situation. Okay. And my question is whether or not to buy a property and put, like, what I would pay for rent into a piece of land that, like, doesn't – it's undeveloped and live on the camper – in the camper on that land – or to continue 
renting a like camping spot at a campground. Let's see. Seven. Let's work through this here. Let's find out. <laughs> Man. I mean, I'm I'm biased towards a certain thought, but I don't want to go there yet until I unpack it, John. Right? So let, let's go through it. Do you have any money? That's the first question. Like, are you in debt? Let's no. let's walk so it through. All my all my school is paid for by a full ride scholarship. Sweet. Um yes. So I have no worries about college, all books, all college tuition, everything is paid for in that situation. Basically I only Your have campers paid for? Yes. Campers totally paid for. I have no debt. No I don't even own a credit card. Love it. Like I I would I'm a, I'm a Dave Ramsey baby. I was Sarah! raised on Dave Ramsey. <laughs> Hold on. You can't be all the way a Dave Ramsey baby because he has a thing in his soul about living in campers. Yes, he does. Oh. Because <laughs> okay, they, so they I, drop like a rock. When you said you had a horrible living experience, was it in the camper? No, 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 no. It was in a renter's situation. So currently my um, renting situation kind of um, – it, the fact of the matter is I don't have a kitchen and I barely have a bathroom in my current renting situation. Okay. okay. And as soon as this lease ends, you're out, out of there. Bye Felicia. Okay. But have you, yeah. have you <laughs> just because you had one bad renting situation yeah. doesn't mean the other one, another one is going to be equally bad. Right. Um, Cause you've basically chosen murder and murder as your other two options. I'm going to get a camper <laughs> and move to raw land in the woods or I'm going to move into like a campground and cross my fingers. When did you get the camper? About six months ago. So you've had um, it. I've lived I've lived in a camper before. I've lived in two other camping type situations. And personally, I love it. Like I'm okay. a very handy person. I work on my own car. All like right. My dad's a mechanic. Um, my what? adopted dad was an electrician. So I'm very handy. I've learned a lot of things about how to be self-sufficient what, what's Sweet. the price difference like what what are we looking at versus you versus you living getting you know renting a plot of land for the camper versus you doing right. a traditional like renting situation in an area you can afford what are we looking at price wise so the camper would be eight hundred dollars a month all utilities included wi-fi sewer water everything okay well, we already the know that's average apartment price that is not a dump like what I'm moving out of here is thirteen hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Okay. And how much money do you have saved? About twenty thousand. And if I were to buy land, it'd be twelve months from now. And I'm hoping to have like a down payment saved of like thirty thousand. I would not buy land, and here's why. Yeah, I, you, we're talking about renting land. No, no, she wants to buy land or go to a campground. I would not buy land because you don't know how long you're going to be in this area. Yeah, let's and not you buy think it. you know, like, no, 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 when I get out of college, I'm going to. I would not put down roots like that. I would recommend any, if you, even if you said, hey, I'm, I'm a first year college grad, mm -hmm. I would tell you to rent because yeah. the, you don't okay. want to be tied down to something. I would much, hey, man, 800 bucks for all the utilities. That's not a bad gig. That ain't dude. bad. It's and not especially bad. if you love that lifestyle. But hear us when we say, Please don't buy it. Just rent it. Yeah, just don't rent buy it. land. What, what are you thinking about buying? Yeah. Just just because I got to know, because you sound incredible. I, I In my thought, like I've done all the numbers. I, um, I'm a numbers person. My degree will be in business. So I wanted to buy an acre, put a, um, electric and water on the property for a camper, and then possibly build like two or three other spots to rent to people in the area because camping is huge in florida like that's mm -hmm. like the retiree lifestyle i think that the market is very big for it you're here so and then you're amazing you've got to help pay for them like i'd want to pay the mortgage off in like less than two years how much does it cost to put a well on property about twenty thousand dollars are you confident in that because my neighbor just put one in for forty five thousand, and they missed and they had to do it again Ooh. well the water table here is really <laughs> high like the the that is well, true. here would only be like 10 or 15 feet. How feet. much does it cost like, to it run power really to well. put a pole in and run power? Well, I'd have my dad help me, so like $5,000. <laughs> I know, but someone's got to come in from the city and run a... Yeah. I just love the fact that you're You're a gangster, thinking, dude. You're yeah, so awesome. The way that you're thinking is, is wonderful. I think that, again, for now, renting is the way because you're still halfway through school. You've got a lot on your plate, so let's not let's just do one thing at a time. And I love that you're paying for school. I love that you're in such a cash positive position with your money, no debt. You've got the savings, you know, look for a great place to rent. And I know that you could even look for folks like private land and contact those folks and see if you can 
you know, rent their land for yeah, a while. The, the renting situation is a, a private, like, um, that's all I've looked into. The $800 okay, great. Private and and then, I, like, I feel like you're already a student of this, but keep being a student of how this works. And that way, when you're ready, if you decide in two years or whatever that you still want to move forward with this purchase of land and, you know, create all this stuff, then you're even more confident in it, in, in that endeavor. So here's here's kind of the principles or the values in order. Get out of school without owing anybody anything. Mm-hmm. And don't take the risk proposition right now versus the reward. The risk that you get in there and you get a mess, you get somebody that you rented out a property and they burn the place down or they end up being a lunatic or whatever. That risk is not worth you getting out of college. You have a Willy Wonka ticket. You've got everything paid for. Yes. Get out of college with 25 or 30 or 40 grand in the bank with mm-hmm. no debt and game. You, like you are already launched out of the system. And like Jade said, keep doing your research on this because I think this is in your future. I'm confident. The reason I'm being super nice to you is I'm fairly certain I'm going to work for you someday. <laughs> like you are so far ahead of where I could ever be when it comes to entrepreneurial spirit and already figuring stuff out. That's amazing. Your parents so, did a great so job. Good. Um, but yeah, get principle number one: get out of this thing debt free. Just get out of school. No yeah. risk. Don't 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 go bananas. And then principle two is start investing in your future when you walk across that stage. Woo! Sarah's Good killing the game. Man, and she knows the lingo. She was talking the talk, walking the walk. Proud of you, Sarah. I can't wait to see. Man, you're going to like really be an influential business person, landowner one day. I love it. She's a boss. This is The Ramsey Show. guys this is jade you're listening to the ramsey show i'm joined by my host co-host dr john deloney mental health extraordinaire that's probably, that's probably, probably a bit of a stretch <laughs> what extraordinaire no, no you know what you're talking about and so that's why uh, if you're listening and you have a problem it could be money related it could be relationship related it could be a little bit of both be sure to give us a call the number is 888-825-5225 we want to listen and we want to help you sort it through whatever it may be um and speaking of sorting through problems john this right here you guys, you know, we always get articles that come through our email or, you know, sometimes the show producers are like, guys, you got to look at this. This article right here is something definitely worth talking about. Just the title alone, like made my ears perk up. It says five signs that you will never become rich one day. It ain't happening. Basically, if you fall into some of the categories that are listed here and it, it, it sounds funny to say, but it's actually pretty serious. So let's Let's just kind of work through these five, John, because I feel like this is, I mean, it, it's, it's accurate. Um, how do you know that you will never be rich? Number one, you have a victim. Let's go through it first. You have a victim mentality. Two, saying money is not important to me. Three, you love to spend more money than you make. Four, you have a scarcity mindset. And five, you're obsessed with being the best in your business. You're not obsessed with being the best in your business. So let's let's break it on down here because I I know the two that stood out to me what that I've they? struggled with. What's that? The struggle is you have a victim mentality. Okay. I hate to say a lot of these. Um, you just say that money is not important to me because I grew up with that. Like, oh, oh, I don't want to be a millionaire. You know, if you have a million dollars, I mean, that's just going to change who you are. And we don't need that. And rich people are like this and rich people are like that. And it's kind of like you negative your way out of... You, you make something that's great sound so terrible. Who would ever want that? There's right? a, uh, a, a, an old Methodist minister in Texas that says the most offensive word in the English language is they. Mm. And when you grow up with those, they, those people, people with that kind of money are them, yes. it, it, it creates this little false cocoon around 
Yeah. We aren't like that, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's a great recipe for sitting right where you are forever. Well, it, and it goes both ways because you can paint those people to be like these horrible people, like, you know, just mean rich people. or They're evil, yeah. Yeah. Greedy old rich people. Or, which I also saw this growing up, is they're just the people on the hill. Yeah. Like they're, they're sparkly and they're shiny perfect. and perfect yep. and they had all this opportunity and there, there must be like this special gleam about them and that's how they got it. And we're not those people, you know, yeah. we're not the people who invest. We didn't get lucky. Yeah. We didn't, yeah. we don't, we don't wear a suit and tie to work. We don't carry a briefcase. And so we don't invest and we don't build wealth. And if we do, we don't talk about it because I never heard about it. <laughs> So that for sure. And then the victim mentality of it, 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 and it goes hand in hand because it's like, if only they would have done that, then I could have had this. Mm. Or if only they hadn't have done that, I could have had this. And at some point, you just got to leave that by the wayside and go, hey, that just was what it was. And now it's not about what happened. It's about what happens next. And I get to decide what happens next. Well, and I, I remember looking at I mean, you had more. I remember looking at six figures of student loan debt, and my first thought was th- what they did. Heck yeah. I signed my name to that paper. Did I fully know what I was getting into? No. But I signed it, man. And I can sit there and stare at it and yell and scream yeah. at what they did, or I can get about solving the problem. Absolutely. I can get about solving the problem. And that's the hard part, right? Because the fact is... We do know that student loans and all that kind of stuff, we do know that situations can be predatory. We do know they that you can be people. done wrong, right? And it's not negating the fact that something happened was or was not wrong, right? Correct. Absolutely. But it's just, it takes some fortitude, man, to come in and be like, despite that, I may have played a role in this, especially when it comes to debt. And I've just developed this thought in my mind now where it's like, whatever it is that I'm complaining about, yapping about, whining about, there's probably something, Jade, that you can do to make it better instead of claiming it's all them or all that or, you know, I'm married. So, you know, I can always be like, it's Sam Warshaw. No, Jade, you look at you, too. And Everybody's participating. Yes, yeah. Can't be yeah. the victim mentality. But changing that is so, so hard. It's so, so hard. Um, you love to spend more money than you make. I, we wouldn't have a show if it wasn't for that. <laughs> we all struggle with that. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I, that, that one kind of stands on itself. The one that stuck out to me was you have a scarcity mindset. And Ooh. that's one of those like Instagram-y buzzword things that I kind of roll my eyes at. Yeah. Until I met Dave, quite honestly, behind really? closed doors. Mm-hmm. And I've heard how people firsthand talk about who are buddies with Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. That it, He's so insanely generous behind closed doors mm-hmm. that the whole the whole pitch is there's so much more than enough for all of us. Yeah. And that's a true way that, that dude lives his life. With Dave, there's always so much more that opportunity than there is ever going to be people to do the work. And of so course. It's a spirit with which they live. And so if it's like, oh, we'll just take that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, man, that's expensive. I. He he was buying something and I uh, and the guy came in here and I, I said hey put one on for me because I want I want to buy one of those. Well he just put on Dave's tab and so I put some money by Dave's thing for it. Uh huh. And I had that money on my desk. That same money I put he he put it on my desk and he's like <laughs> he's like dude there's more than enough there, there's more than enough. But yeah. it, it, it's how you tip it's how you live. And so this scarcity mindset if I don't get mine then someone's gonna get mine. Yeah. That is a way to live a tiny shriveled up life and it's a miserable way of existing i've always um heard the phrase i heard this phrase when i was in college and i say it to this day as a reminder what god has for you is for you and it kind of whenever i feel that feeling of if i don't get to this in time it's gone or if i don't do this there's only a little bit left i love the way this says it it says believing that success is a pie with limited slices and i always have to remind myself no jade And for anybody listening, God has a special plan for you. It's not contingent upon whether other people do what they were supposed to do or if other people are successful or not. It's just you and your plan and you competing with yourself and you getting better than your former self. It's not every, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, don't get me wrong. We're all connected. But this idea that somebody can take something from me that was supposed to be mine 
I don't believe that. I think that the only person that can hinder you is you and no one's going to steal. Well, my business would have grown if it wasn't for that guy over there. No, you, there was probably something you were supposed to do. Well, if it wasn't for, you know, student loans, I could have been rich by now. No, it's probably like I don't believe that somebody can steal like your purpose and your what's meant for you from you. I don't know. Is that controversial? No, no. I, 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 I just love the idea that. <laughs> There's enough. There's enough. There's enough. There's enough. What's for you is for you, but you got to be the one to go out and get it. And the but, last one is, um, ooh, I struggle I like with this that. one because I see the other side. I see the the mental health issue side of this thing. I'm, I'm going to be speaking at Entree Summit. There'll be 2,500, 3,000 business leaders. I see them struggle with this, but at the same time, it's the truth. Uh -huh. I don't know a way around it. You're not obsessed with being the best in your business. Okay. You, like... And I think the best in your business, we have transposed to winning. Uh -huh. Like I have to win. And if your obsession was, is with winning at all costs, you're going to find yourself banging on trash cans to cheap pitches, right? Like my mm. beloved Astros did. They <laughs> stopped trying to be excellent at everything and they started trying to win everything and you yeah. cut corners. But if you get obsessed with excellence yeah. and honoring the person who put, gave you their money or their time and ask you to help solve a problem in their business and you become obsessed with excellence, dude. And if you're not obsessed with you excellence, don't do business. Don't do business. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I mean, I got to say, I agree with this list. Looking at it, I've been all of the people on here at least once, <laughs> if not many, many times in my life. And yeah, me too. If you can get a hold of just a couple of these, you're on your way. You are well on your way. Um, I mean, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. What do you think, John? Don't be a victim. Make your money. If your money's not important to you, it's going to be important to somebody else. Don't spend more than you make. There's always more than enough. And be obsessive about excellence. Love that. This is The Ramsey Show. Jade Warshaw, your host, joined by Dr. John Deloney, mental health expert and just overall good dude. Let's go with that. I'll take that. That's yeah. the nicest thing someone said about me today. I will say, yes, John Deloney, an upstanding human being, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you know who else is? Eddie Cullen out there in the Eddie! in the lobby. One That's of the nicest guys about. you'll ever meet. That is a fact. Eddie Cullen is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. And let me just throw this out here. He's hosting a Financial Peace University class. And if you haven't joined a class, you should go ahead and join his class. Uh, all the personalities are hosting classes. I am smack dab knee deep in the middle of one. Mine John too. Deloney, you yep. too? Yep. Yes. Yep. Killing the game. When I tell you guys people are changing their lives, I mean that. So if you haven't signed up already and you're interested in just doing things a little bit differently with your finances and making some traction, sign up for a Financial Peace University class. Or if you just need a little bit of advice with your life and your money, you can give us a call here. The number is 888-825-5225. And with that, we're going to talk to Jesse in Nashville, Tennessee. What's going on, Jesse? How's it going, everybody? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. Love um, to hear it. So Mike? My question is, I'm 24 years old. My wife and I are officially in baby step number four. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious if we should start the next baby step or keep investing in my business to grow it. Well, if you're in baby step four, you need to do baby step four, which is putting 15% of your income aside for retirement, right? Okay. So we do need to do that. And then technically you're doing four, five, six simultaneously. So do you have kids college to think about? Um, not yet. So we, we're, we're almost a year married, so we're not even okay. thinking about that. So we can kind of cross so. that out for now. Here's and, my scary yep. question for you. <laughs> my scary question is, are you running this business out of your personal family finance accounts? Because investing uh, for, into your business should be business money that you have made that you're choosing to reinvest into your business. Should correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, there's about 200K in a business account. And then there's a fully funded emergency fund about of about twenty thousand for for your for business? the business or for personal, 
for personal. Okay, that doesn't... Bro town in Motown, you got to separate these things o- apart, okay? okay. Mm-hmm. It's going to get messy, messy real okay. quick. So you would have a set of reserves in your business, retained earnings that you can keep kind of as savings for what you might need in your business. Now, I will say, if you're just getting a business off the ground, sometimes you might inf- Use your business with some personal cash, of course. Yeah. But in this case, I mean, you said you've got 200K. I feel like there's John, what John is saying is right. Your personal investing has nothing to do with your business investing, unless I, I want to learn more about that. <laughs> are you, you taking a draw? Are you, are, you, are you paying yourself a salary? No, I'm not paying a salary. So um, I, it's kind of just like an owner's personal pay and expense. So. I kind of oh bro dude my, so you're just basically running a business and you're using the business accounts to like run your life basically that's no we don't want to do that dude we gotta okay. separate that instantly <laughs> you are about to yeah you just it, it it's easy like yeah, simple it, it, it you can start today like you just need to like head down to the bank set up a business account doing business as whatever and well sorry for context sake no no I have an LLC set up like okay. it's all business like legally structured it's uh-huh. just i know but you're the, living out of that structure and when it comes to tax you're going to find yourself in a mega mess okay yeah we're we're setting aside a a, a, a decent amount every month into the taxes so. okay that's good you just basically what you want to make sure and you probably need to work with a bookkeeper or you know cpa somebody to help you out so that you understand what's technically a business expense, what's not, because you don't want to use your business account to buy your son a new pair of shoes, right? Because that's not really a business expense. However, if you went to dinner and you were talking business with somebody that you're you know, consulting with, that could be a business expense. And Correct. so you just want to make sure you understand that and b- basically just understand personal savings is personal savings and business savings is business savings. And as much, it sounds like you have built the business enough to where you're taking profit from the business and reinvesting it into the business as opposed to having to give yourself like personal cash infusions, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay. But you also have a single credit card or a single debit card and you are paying for groceries with that, paying for your car with that, right? So I'm moving money out of the business account into a... Like a oper- like a personal expense account. Yeah, dude, it, it's so much cleaner if you just pay yourself a thousand bucks a month or whatever okay. your whatever you need. Pay yourself a yeah. salary. You can it, it helps with that helps with taxes too, but it keeps everything so so clean. And whatever mm-hmm. you decide to pay yourself, you're gonna take fifteen percent of that and invest it because you're in baby step four. If it's if it's two thousand bucks a month and it's twenty five twenty four grand a year, that's what you choose to pay yourself. That's how you're going to buy groceries, and that's how you're going to buy cars. That's how you're going to buy stuff. Then you're going to take 15% of that. Then the rest of the money that's in your business, you can reinvest that in your business. That's You're responsible for growing your business however you you think it's going to work. Um, Jesse, how are you investing right now? Because are are you doing like a individual 401k? Do you have a SEP, or are you investing through your wife's job? How are you doing it? Honestly, I have, you know, put all of my effort and energy towards the business. And so I haven't really done any, I mean, there's probably a thousand dollars in a Schwab account right now that, you know, just like a Roth IRA or something. Yeah. I, otherwise I've just put all my energy in the last year into getting into getting to this point where I could, you know, have these kind of conversations. So cool. And good work, man. Is it, is, is there other work going on? Like, does your wife have? Yeah. My wife's an ICU nurse. So, okay. So she's got retirement funds set up? Yes. Okay, sweet. So the 15% is going there first. Well, can you just live off her salary right now while you're building this business? That is a good possibility. I don't think that's out of scope. So y'all may want to sit down and look at that because it might be that you're a, you're able to live off your wife's salary, which is going to be excellent because she's doing great hard work and you're able to invest in this business Sounds like things just are a little bit messy. Has the business kind of taken off on you? It it has over the last like four months. It's Dude, been congratulations! Really What's the business? Uh, we provide digital marketing and software for a variety of different businesses. Outstanding! Well done, man. Well done. Thank you. Uh, but I'll I, clean it up. I would sit down with it, like you're at a place now. We got a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank. You're at a place now where you need to sit down with an accountant if you haven't already and begin. Yeah, to... we have we have an accountant on Good. retainer right now. Yeah, y'all need to sit down and map it out to make sure everything is super clean. Um, and then you and your wife sit down with the budget, man. Yeah, that's good. Cool. 
Yeah. If you get to the point, you know, I would definitely start with Roth IRAs and match max those out when you're doing your baby step four and then whatever 401k, you know, your wife has through her job. And then if you get to the point where you're maxing out all that as well, then, you know, look to your business and see what's, what's possible there with your an accountant. Totally. Accountant. Okay. Yeah. Did we answer your question? I think there's like another question I have out of what you guys have uh, helped me with. Um, Bring it. And I think it's just really the balance between, you know, like I could, you know, hire some coaches to help with scaling and getting more revenue or like, you know, putting a down payment on a house, you know, it's just what's the, like, what's the right balance for this stage we're at, which is kind mm-hmm. of, you know, in a cool place. Cause we just paid off the last bit of the student loan. So, I mean, it's just what, at what stage do you say, okay, I'm going to take out, you know, a down payment, down payment for a home and, you know, what, go towards the next baby steps? What Sam and I did is we were focused on building our personal life a little bit more so than we were building our business. So whenever mm-hmm. there was a question of should we focus more on paying off debt or, you know, building the business, it was more like, no, we want to be able to breathe in life. So let's do let's focus on the debt first. And then when the debt is gone, we'll be able to pay ourselves less and then focus more into the business. And so that's kind of how we did it. Um, I like John's idea of paying yourself a set salary, but I do understand that sometimes when your goals change and you have the ability to pull more out and pay yourself more, you do. And then when you're like, no, now I want it. So I do understand that that can change um, depending on you know the size of your business and where you're at. But here's what's been valuable for me and my wife in our in our we've been married, God Almighty, almost 21 years, is. Every time we hit a season like this, like you guys, you and your wife have been running for your lives. Y'all have been busting it. What you haven't never done probably is sit down and dream about what comes next. Mm -hmm. So go out and have an incredible breakfast in the morning and the sun shining here in Nashville and talk about a future together. And that's going to help. Like what's more important? Do we need a house right now or the next five years? We're going to grow this business. Y'all work on that vision together. And some of those answers, like, like Jade said, her and Sam had worked that out. Here's our vision. And those answers kind of worked themselves out when you and your wife are on the same, on the same This team. is The Ramsey Show. It's your host, Jade Warshaw, joined by John Deloney. This is The Ramsey Show, our scripture and quote of the day. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. Proverbs 12, 15. Love that one. And of course, from the man, Prince, he says, I like constructive criticism from smart people. That's what I'm saying. I'm not taking it from anything less. <laughs> That's fantastic. So y'all, some of y'all, I'm talking to somebody right now. Some of y'all's criticisms that I see on the interwebs, I'm not taking it. I'm not even listening to it. Not smart people. It's not from smart people. That's how it goes. That is how it goes. All right. Give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225. Dawn from Los Angeles, California. What's going on? <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for calling. What can we help you with? So I'm in baby step number one, but I racked up a considerable amount of debt um, throughout the pandemic, mm-hmm. including the purchase of a, of a new vehicle. Oh, no. And in listening to you guys, I'm wondering if I should just sell my car um, and try to buy another one for cash. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about this car situation. What are you, what's the vehicle? Would you buy, would it's, you... Um, it's a 2020 Ford Escape, which I use for work every day. Um, it's a great, reliable vehicle. I'm sure um, it is. But it, it is definitely nicer than what I need. And as I've been just listening to the Ramsey show and uh, realizing what a financial impact it's making on my already mm-hmm. existing debt, I've just been wondering if it would be a better idea to um, to sell it and buy another one cash. Yeah. So let's break down the numbers. Um What'd you spend on it? 
Um, it was about 40. Um, okay. I've been paying, uh, I've paid probably about 10,000 off so far in the last three years. So, so you I owe about 30? About 30. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if you were to sell it today, what's it worth? I don't even know. Okay. So that's the first thing we want to look at because if you owe 30 on it and if you were to sell it, you know, it's, they'd only give you 20 or something like that for it. We need to understand that. So that's the first thing I would look at. Now let's take a look at your income. So you spent 40 K on a vehicle. What's your take home pay every month or your mm -hmm. yearly income? However you want to. Three to 5,000 a month. Okay. Yeah. A little too much car, I would say on that. Yeah, um, any other debt do you have? I've got about twenty thousand dollars of credit card debt and about thirty thousand in loans. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got to get out of this car. Twenty thousand of credit card debt, thirty thousand in loans. Explain to me the spread on your income. You said between three to five thousand dollars. That's a big spread. Help me understand that. So I'm a massage therapist, and I'm in school right now to become a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. So I don't work regular hours. I'm not on a, a regular salary. I'm basically just available for when my clients need me. Okay. And are and, you... um, during the pandemic, I wasn't able to work at all legally. So that was a, a major impact and part of the reason that I started taking out loans. Okay. So you were just taking out loans and credit cards to just fund your life? Yes. And not working. Yes. Okay. So. Do you recognize the, we're never going to do that again, ever? Oh, yeah. Ever, yeah. ever, 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 ever. It's a series of horrible decisions, and I'm so glad that I decided to, to try and reach out to find some sort of a financial advisor who pointed me to the Dave Ramsey website. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been learning about how to manage personal finances. Welcome to our crazy gang, man. <laughs> We got you. So you're you're yeah. schooling right now. Is it is it full time? Tell me about your school. I want to get an idea yes. of your time, um, yes. what your time looks I'm, like. I'm in school full time. I'm working as close to full time as I can, um, and just basically running into way too much month at the end of my money, mm -hmm. and just you know my credit cards they are ranging from about 25 to 30% interest each month Woo! um the payments that i'm making are not even really making a dent i'm just yeah. drowning yeah in, so the the key here and, the key here is you got to get your income up how much school do you have left how um, much how much time until school's done 6 years wait you just started 6 years I, I, I've been a, a small business owner for 10 years, and I just just jumped back into school uh, last semester to get my um, bachelor's in kinesiology so that I can apply to a physical therapy program. Yep. Excellent. All right, can you, are, are, you, are you cash flow in this? You're taking out student loans. I've taken out student loans as no, well. That's, okay. that's part of the loan. Yeah. We got we to you you I hate to tell you, you got to stop. We got to stop. We got to stop and back up because... We, you started going full steam ahead on a good intentioned plan, but with a yeah. with a bad strategy. Does that yeah. make sense? Good intention that yeah. you want to get your in income, you want to you know get your education, change careers. I love that, but let's do it the right way because you are. I mean, like you said, you're barely making you're making three thousand bucks a month, barely making payments on this stuff. We've got to find a way that we can go in an order that makes sense. Um, right now, there is a trade. That you or a skill set that you have that you know how to do and you can make money on it. I I would love to see you get control of this financial situation and then work towards a way that you can finance school, uh, pay for school, so that you're not taking out student loan debt. Because yeah. right Other, now, otherwise you're gonna you're gonna wake up in six years, you're gonna owe one hundred fifty thousand dollars in addition to all this money. Yeah, we're not going forward. Like we would not love you if we said this is a great idea and. Both Jade and I have been to a lot of college. We both believe in school and I love school. That's right. But you are, you are, man, you are, you're trying to put out a fire with a blowtorch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that's what it feels like. Yeah, you got to stop. The step one to getting out of debt is stop getting in more debt. Yeah, got to draw a line in the sand. Debt's no longer Never an option. again, yeah. Do you see what we're saying? We're, we're coming down on you hard and I, I don't want you to think that we're squashing yes. your dreams. We're just no, saying in a minute. Way. 
Okay. I, yeah. No, I, I understand. And that's why I was so, I couldn't believe that you guys took my call because I've been listening to your show and I just thought, man, I wish I could just ask them. Yeah. I wish I could just ask somebody. Look, Don. okay, yes. So what we're doing is we're, we're going to cool it on school for a second so that we can come up with a plan. And tonight, I want you in your journal to go, okay, here's what I want to accomplish. I want to, you want to get out of debt. We know that you're wondering about the car. So that's what I want you to write. You know, just scribble it out. Debt. Okay. Car, car is first Think And we're going to think we're going to get out of this car. We need to find out if you're writing it down now, find out what the car is worth because we want to make sure that we can sell it. Do we need to get a little loan to cover the difference and get out of that car and then get just a little beater car cash? Great. That eliminates 30 K of debt. And you know what I mean by a beater, $2,000, $3,000, $5,000 car. All right. The next thing we're thinking about is income. We're not making enough income and the income we have is not steady. So we need to be thinking about, okay, you've got a skill set. Let's get some full time numbers going, because once you get those full time numbers going, we can start smashing this debt and we can start making a plan to save for school. And the faster that we can save for school, the faster you can go to school. And in the meantime, I want you to start making a plan for school. And we're just writing this down. What comes first? What comes second? What comes third? And the school thing right now, John, you can tell me if you think I'm wrong. I think right now school is third because you have a way that you can earn money. It's something you're good at. At some point, you you enjoyed it. What school are you going to? West Los Angeles College. Okay. Um, is this for your undergrad degree? Yeah, I originally got my associates in psychology, Mm -hmm. so I'm starting back to get an associate to transfer in kinesiology to get the bachelor's to get accepted to the physical therapy program. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Um, I had both my knees done two summers ago, and my physical therapist was incredible. That's awesome. Guess where she went to school? Where? I have no idea because I didn't care. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. When you are paying for college, when you are paying for college with cash, you go for the free option, you go for the cheap option, you go for the best option for your for your buck. And so, like Jade said, I think she's right. I think it's number three, and I think you spend some time shopping, 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 and find a great education option that's going to be that's going to fit your budget. Don, thank you for the call. Look, you're on the right track. You just need to pull back a little bit and start doing it the right way. And that's just thing one, thing two, thing three in order of importance, making sure that you're doing this thing without a cent of debt. All right, that does it for this hour. Be sure to join us next time. You can tell me you won't do it, but please don't tell me you can't. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.